Hi, this is Dennis with Pathmaker, and today we're covering the subject of tithing. Uh, I know there's a lot of questions out there whether tithing is biblical or not, and we're going to cover some verses that hopefully clear that issue up for you. Now, um, one of the issues about tithing is that tithing was a practice amongst the Old Testament Jews uh, at the temple regarding sacrifices. They would give a portion of the sacrifices to the Levite priests because Levites were known not to have any inheritance. And so uh, that was a way of supporting them. Uh, tithing is today has become a tradition and it's not biblical, at least for a New Testament Christian. Somebody who's accepted Christ as their Lord and Savior, uh, it's not something that is, uh, it really is supposed to uh, put pressure on a, a somebody who's become a Christian. And why do I say that? Well, um, Jesus talked about offerings, but he didn't talk about tithings. Uh, the idea of tithings is something that's Old Testament. So if you have somebody who has come to know Christ, believes in Jesus, they fall under a new covenant. That covenant is with Jesus through uh, a clean slate, wiped clean. So for the New Testament, uh, and somebody who has made a commitment to Christ and has this new faith, uh, they don't fall into old covenants and are required to tithe because uh, that is something that was an Old Testament practice. So why is it done today? Why do church leaders come out and you know tell their congregations that you know that they have to tithe, that that's important, it's part of their um, you know giving? Well, let's look over some scriptures and see what does it actually say. Um, about giving and the church. Now, uh, 2 Corinthians uh, 9-7, I'll read that out. It says, Each of you must make up your mind, make up your own mind about how much to give. But don't feel sorry that you must give and don't feel that you are forced to give. God loves people who love to give or he loves a cheerful giver. If you read the NIV, it says cheer cheerful giver. Now, let's kind of break that down. Each of you must make up your own mind about how much to give. Okay, so in that statement there, in 2 Corinthians 9-7, uh, there's no set amount. In other words, the Christian is supposed to make a decision on what they give uh, to the church or to a charity or to whatever they want to give. God loves a cheerful giver, but that Christian must make the decision, uh, not the church. The church is not supposed to say, hey, you have to give us 10% or, or 20%, or if you want to be like Old Testament, give 30%. That is actually incorrect teaching. And, you know, why do they do that? Well, we'll get to that in a moment. But let's go to the rest of that verse. The rest of the verse continues on with, but don't feel sorry that you must give and don't feel that you are forced to give. Okay, so there's two uh, ideas that come out of that one sentence, but don't feel sorry. In other words, don't feel compelled. Whether you feel sorry or you feel forced, that's not, uh, if you're giving because of those two, uh, that's not biblical. Uh, in other words, it's kind of like when you see a uh, commercial and you see that dog that's, you know, really roughed up, living on the streets, dirty, and, you know, has no place and is hungry. And that commercial compels you to give money to this particular organization so they could save these animals. Well, that's getting you emotionally involved to give. And the Bible is saying, hey, don't fall for that. Okay, you're not supposed to feel compelled like that. Or the other way, it says, uh, don't feel that you are forced to give. In other words, if somebody from your church is saying, you have to give this much money, um, you know, and they're putting pressure on you. Well, that's unbiblical also because that verse says, hey, you're not supposed to feel compelled, whether it's feeling sorry or feeling forced by anyone to give any amount of money. That is supposed to come from your heart, how much you want to give uh, as a believer in Christ and whether it's helping out, you know, whatever, a family member, a friend, an organization, it really comes down to your heart and what you want to give. Not by you know, f compelled because you feel sorry uh, because there was a commercial or maybe something at the church, you know, tugged at your heart and all of a sudden you're giving money. That's actually unbiblical. And, you know, this the second issue is, you know, forced. I, that actually happens a lot today where, you know, I think every uh, preacher you see on TV or even maybe at your own church 
says that you must give, you know, or you, they somehow do some verbal gymnastics to make it sound like you need to give. And I don't think a lot of people understand that that is actually not only unbiblical, but it actually hurts parishioners or people that are uh, attending church. And why do I say that? Well, think about it. You have all, all of this pressure on a congregation or a parishioner or people that go to church that they must give 10%, which is unbiblical. So you put this pressure on them. So they're walking around with this mindset that I have to give money to the church first before these other issues in my life. Now, that is a problem. Uh, because if you have family members that are hurting and are in need, or if you have relatives that, um, you know, family, relatives, or friends that you know have needs and you don't help them, the Bible says you're worse than an unbeliever. And let's go over some scripture over that. Uh, 1 Timothy 5 8 says, People who don't take care of their relatives and especially their own families have given up their faith. They are worse than someone who doesn't have faith in the Lord, worse than an unbeliever. So keep that in mind. If it's in your heart, you know, God says you put it in your heart, you know, how much to give, when and where to give. That's your decision up to you, not compelled by anyone. Uh, you must put your family first. So I'm sorry to say that if you're a Christian and you're giving to your church first before helping that relative that you know needs help, either paying their rent or putting food on the table, or it says you're worse than an unbeliever uh, because you're choosing a method that's unbiblical, doing that first before you're choosing your own family. So that's something to really pray and think about if that's something that's been a common practice in your life, in your Christian walk. Um, Matthew 16, 12 says, uh, and this is talking about, you know, one thing about Jesus is he was always confronting the Pharisees. And who were the Pharisees? The Pharisees were the leaders, the church leaders who represented God of the day in Jesus' time. Uh, synagogues, temple, you name it. Typically, it was a Pharisee, a Sadducee, or a scribe that uh, was always being addressed by Jesus. And he was always calling them hypocrites, liars. Uh, sons of devils, always telling them, woe to you. And why is that? Well, he, these are people that represented God at the highest level of society. Why would Jesus criticize them? They're church leaders. Well, the problem was, is Jesus was commenting on how they picked their traditions over giving mercy and helping people. Does that sound familiar today? Um, it's rampant. It's a problem right now in the church that, you know, they're looking for money to support a business model, to pay for the rent, to pay for salaries. And um, I get that, you know, but I also understand that families need to put their families first. So keep that in mind. That is all biblical. And this verse that uh, I want to bring up is Matthew 16, 12. It says, then they understood that he was not telling them to guard against the yeast used in bread, but against the teaching of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. So the problem of the Sadducees and the Pharisees and the scribes is they were teaching people traditions that were uh, not in alignment with God. For instance, uh, when you know they approached Jesus on a number of times about uh, whether it was eating on the Sabbath or healing on the Sabbath or working on the Sabbath, but Jesus always responded with, well, wait a minute, those are your traditions. And he would say, wouldn't you take your ox or your donkey or, you know, uh, if it happened on a Sunday, wouldn't you pull them out, you know, of that ditch? You know, would you leave them there just because it's a Sunday and you can't work? He says, of course not. Common sense says, hey, that's, that's an animal that could die in there or it's part of your livelihood or it could get worse and uh, they could get even uh, more injured there. So, of course, you have to remove that animal. Or, you know, wouldn't you uh, take your, your, your ox or your donkey or horses, wouldn't you take them to get them water, even though that's considered working? Yes, you would get them water. Uh, that's part of their survivability. So there was like this lack of common sense amongst the Pharisees because of their traditions. Now, 
how does that apply to today? There are traditions that have happened in the church today when it comes to when it comes to this issue of money uh, and giving. You know, they have put this mindset that 10% is what you have to give, but if you're a really good Christian, you know, you'll give more. And it's almost like trying to buy your way into heaven uh, just because you're listening to what church leaders say. I'd be very careful because if Jesus was criticizing the church or synagogue or temple leaders in his day, uh, that needs to that needs to be scrutinized today. Are your church leaders following what Jesus said in the scriptures or what the Bible says in general about how to behave? So tithing is unbiblical, uh, but offerings are okay because Jesus said, you know, he loves a, a, a cheerful giver. And it's if something that maybe somebody has the resources and can give, there's nothing wrong with giving offerings. Um, the problem is, is when it is the verbal gymnastics come in and, you know, uh, church leaders are using it for some sort of gain for the church. I'd also like to mention that um, the Apostle Paul mentioned how, you know, it was really important that um, the gospel message got out. And one thing that was very notice, notif- notable about uh, the Apostle Paul was, when he was in his 50s, he was working as a tent maker in Ephesus and in, in the mornings. And then towards the evenings, he was teaching at the school of Tyrannus. So, and that's, we have that in, in, in church, you know, records, that that is, that is the Apostle Paul. He did, this is how he practiced. He worked as well as preached. So, that was a very good example Tithing is not okay. Offerings are okay. Um, Don't be forced or feel compelled uh, either by a sad story or by, you know, somebody at the church forcing you to give money. Be careful of traditions because just as Jesus criticized the traditions of the Pharisees, today, you know, you can actually criticize church leaders for creating traditions that are unbiblical. And, you know, it's almost like you have to think for yourself with what you have, with what the Bible says. You use the scriptures to reflect into your life. In other words, if you're reading the scriptures and you see that it says, wait a minute, you know, I'm under a new covenant with Christ. Why do I have to pay an old covenant tithing? It, it doesn't make sense. You have to apply the, these things to your life. You know, I I hope this helps. I hope you understand that, uh, you know, we have to follow the practices of what the scriptures say and not what man says. Um, You know, there are things that are said in the church that are unbiblical. And I think there are a lot of Christians today becoming more aware of unbiblical practices. And I really believe God is uh, opening the eyes and changing the hearts of many believers out there today. Um, because if it's, un- if it's an unbiblical practice, uh, it needs to be addressed. Because more than likely, if it's un- an unbiblical practice, it's hurting God's people. It's hurting Christians. It's hurting um, you know, those that don't understand.